Hello everybody, this is Punisher, and I wanted to talk about a new open source standard that will change the way OBS Studio works, and it can make capture cards obsolete here in the future. So what I want to talk about today is a thing called NDI. NDI is made by a company called NewTek. The standards come out here recently. And as NewTek states, NDI is an innovative network device interface technology and is a royalty-free standard enabling IP video workflows across Ethernet networks and represents the most prolific IP-based workflow in the industry. NDI is more than an IP-based replacement for SDI, sending a one-way signal to a switcher, it is bi-directional and not only enabling you to share video and audio over an IP, but you can send and receive multiple inputs and standard signals between devices on your network, making a completely connected facility entirely possible. So what does this mean for OBS Studio? Well, currently, there is a third-party plugin that makes NDI available to OBS Studio. Once it's installed, streamers can stream video and audio captured using OBS from one PC to your streaming PC, where OBS detects the feeds as a source within your scene. So, and it's easy to install. First, you just need to go to obsproject.com forward slash forums, and then go to the OBS Studio plugins thread. There you'll find the new tech NDI plugin thread, and there you can go to the uh, third party site, which is their GitHub, where you can actually install this. Well, first, you need to install the NDI 3.0 runtime. Okay, once you install that, then you install the NDI 4.1.2 Windows installer. Okay, and that'll run like a standard Windows installation. And when you're doing that, it is imperative that you say yes when it asks you to install to your OBS directory that already exists. Okay, it will not erase your install. When that is complete, you're going to restart your computer, and then once you do that, you start up OBS. Okay, once you repeat this process on both your game PC and your streaming PC, you simply set up your re video resolution that you intend to send to your stream rig by going into the video settings of open broadcast software. Okay, and this is all done on your gaming PC. Okay, keep in mind that the preview is not affected by the output stream or record settings. The preview is unencoded and it will give you the best video quality provided you set up the maximum resolution and frame rate that your gaming PC can handle. Because there is no encoding, the CPU usage is minimal even at 1080p and 60 hertz frame rates. Okay, so once you are satisfied with your settings, then you want to go to the tool menu inside of OBS Studio and click on the NDI plugin. Inside that pop-up window, you're going to name your network video feed, and you can name it whatever you want using letters and numbers. And you can enable, once you do that, then you enable the NDI by clicking on the checkbox. And that's all there is to do on your game PC. You don't need to start up your stream or start up record. Your stream PC should see, or your stream PC should see the feed as follows. Okay, so on your stream PC, you're going to start up OBS and you're going to pick your stream scene that you may have already had set up. So if that's the case, all you're going to want to do now is to view your games, uh, game PC's NDI stream is you're going to want to start up a new NDI source. And you simply do that by clicking on the plus, or you can right click inside the sources area on OBS. Okay, and once you do that, you should have, uh, you should see NDI source become available. Okay, and you should see that. And you click that and select it, and then that'll add that as a new source. Okay, once you do that, you should get a little pop up window. Okay, inside that pop up window, you should see a pull down. Uh, my PC. My stream rig, it automatically shows this feed coming from my game PC. It picks it by default. Uh, with NDI, you have the ability to do multiple feeds. So if you have multiple feeds, you have to select which one you want. Okay, if you only have one, it should automatically be selected, but verify that just to make sure. Okay, so what is great about this? Well, it works great for streaming LAN events, right? You can multicast now. Uh, you can pull multiple feeds into one OBS uh, stream and you can set up a scene with multiple different feeds that gives you different player perspectives. 
So once you add the source and it's set up, you can treat it just like any other source layer within your scene. You can adjust it, crop it to whatever resize is necessary and fit it within your scene. So once you do that, then you're ready to stream content like you would normally do in any other way. So here are some benefits that I want to talk about with the NDI based on the testing that I have done within the last week. Okay, so number one, if you have a gaming PC capable of playing current games, more than likely OBS and NDI will not hinder your gaming performance. At most, sending a 1080p 60Hz signal, I saw 13% CPU usage and no noticeable loss in game for, uh, frame rates. If you have the latest AMD or Intel processor, you may be able to send 120 or 144 hertz signal with minimal performance loss. Now I'm talking when I'm talking latest AMD, I'm talking uh, Ryzen 7 or Threadripper. Okay, I don't know if a Ryzen 5 can handle it. I'm not 100% sure. It may be able to. Uh, the 1600X being a six core may be able to handle doing that, but I'm thinking top end because I think uh, I personally tried to send a 120 hertz signal and I could not do it and I don't know if it was because I was limited network wise or limited uh, with my processor but I did see a lot of degradation on my game rig and I saw a lot of lag and skipping on my stream rig so I think that if you were intending to send 120 hertz or 144 hertz signal I think that you would need a lot of processing to do that. Okay, so uh, if you have that latest processor, you can give that a shot, but more than likely you're gonna wanna do a 1080p 60 hertz signal anyway. Okay, so second, the second benefit is this eliminates the need for a capture card if you can successfully send a smooth feed, okay? So imagine saving $150 or more by not having to purchase a capture card and being able to use that money to purchase a nicer CPU, for instance, or even just pocket the money. Okay, in testing, the NDI feed provided equal quality in terms of smoothness, definition, and resolution, while providing superior color and contrast when compared to my capture card. Third, with the latest update to NDI, there is near zero audio latency and desyncing isn't an issue like previous versions of the plugin. I stream Battlefield 1 and PUBG for hours without issue. Fourth, NDI minimizes resources needed to stream. Before, when you wanted to stream without a capture card between two PCs, you had to set up an RTMP server using third-party software, i.e. NGINX, so that you could uh, send a stream over, an RTMP stream over to your stream rig. And while that worked, it still used more CPU resources and it caused problems for streamers on occasion. Well, NDI is super simple to set up and it resides within OBS. I imagine NDI will become embedded within OBS on the next major build, much like RealSense technology is now. All right, fifth, if you're one of those that are having to use my workaround to keep your 144 hertz monitor at 144 hertz because of your capture card, NDI eliminates this workaround by eliminating your capture card from the picture. As a matter of fact, this should reduce CPU usage on your game rig. Lastly, your NDI will get better, better quality video. The NDI feed is raw, unencoded video. Instead of a video being captured and encoded by a capture card to be encoded again on your stream output, you only have one sense of encoding, giving you better video quality. Now for the drawbacks. As with any PC configuration, software functionality will vary. For me, I have an i5-3570K CPU on my gaming PC and an FX8350 on my stream PC, both networked through a gigabyte network. I had zero issues with NDI quality. Others with more capable PCs noted artifacts and lag in their NDI feeds, so results are variable. Just because I have had success doesn't mean that you will. For most, I think your experience will be the same as mine. The great thing about this plugin is there are regular updates that should clear up any issues you may see. I expect most won't see any of the issues that have already been addressed. 
Second, if you're running Windows 7, you may run into some installation issues. Some people are reporting this. Others are attributing this to older processors that do not have SSS E3 capability. AMD Bulldozer and Intel Core 2 and newer processors provide this capability, so most people should be fine. Third, you do have to run OBS in the background, and as with any program running, you use CPU resources that could go toward processing the game you're playing. If you have a CPU that uses nearly all your resources, you may want to play with the settings to see how you fare using NDI. With that said, my CPU nears 100% usage playing Battlefield 1, but I did not have any issues streaming with NDI. I saw the same frame rates as I did using my Elgato HD60 Pro. Older games I have, like Battlefield 3, had a number of DirectX crashes, but I believe that that was because of the game capture source hooking, not because of NDI. Regardless, if older games crash with OBS running, you may not be able to use NDI. Lastly, as of now, this tech is available for PC only. But, as NDI gains popularity, I would not be surprised to see Sony and Microsoft incorporate it into their consoles since NDI is open source. On another note with that, NewTek does make a box called the Spark. Okay, the Spark is an external device that streams to your wireless using, using over-the-air Wi-Fi. What you can do is you can actually hook an HDMI source into that box and then it will wirelessly stream it to any receiver. So the capability is there using NDI to stream to your stream rig through their box. Now that box is $450 and up to $800 depending on which version you get. But you can use this if you decide to go that route, now I do not recommend this for a gamer to buy this, okay? This is something that a professional production company would buy. But with that being said, there is a capability if you were to dive into NDI and you wanted to do it using your using uh, multiple HDMI sources, like a, like a uh, Xbox or PlayStation and HDMI camera that you have, you have the ability to stream all those sources using NDI to a streaming uh, receiver. Well, that's it, guys. I see NDI being the future of streaming, and as processing power becomes available, I see gamers being able to stream at 120 and 144 hertz without the need of expensive third-party devices. So go give NDI a try. Even if you have a capture card, you may still see an improvement like I did. I would like to thank Pulaskis for his explanation and design of the NDI plugin for, India Stu for OBS Studio, and I hope to see this work incorporated into the next OBS major build. Please comment below on your experience with NDI, and if this tutorial helped, please hit the like and subscribe. This is Pun, the Frugal Streamer. Thanks for watching. Until we stream again.